group of activists, students, researchers in Germany and Europe. Anti-caste intersectional feminism, non-hierarchical autonomy are at the core of our collective. DBAV Women, Trans and Non-Binary Peoples Collective is an autonomous group of three generation of Dalit, Bahujan, Adivasi, Vimukta and trans and non-binary activists. As a group, we strive for horizontal and inclusive collaborations. As members of the vibrant anti-caste communities, we've been engaged in critical conversations around caste and anti-caste solidarities to annihilate caste. With this event, we aim to continue that journey and hopefully enable a platform for various Dalit and anti-caste voices and perspectives from South Asia and the diaspora. We also aim to build solidarity with other resistance movements, particularly of Black, Indigenous, ethnic minority, people of color, Roma, Sinti, and ma marginalized migrant groups globally. In the first lecture, I spoke at length about the theme of our lecture series, the anti-caste histories and solidarities. For the benefit of the audience who is joining for the first time, I'll briefly summarize the intellectual and reflexive journey of crafting this lecture series. There is a long-standing movement tradition in Maharashtra and gradually elsewhere in the country and globally to commemorate the thoughts and works of the anti-caste revolutionaries in the month of April, marking the birth anniversary of Jyotira Phule and Ambedkar. We've come a long way in understanding the diversity of all the oppressed caste communities the untouchable communities, indigenous communities, minorities, criminalized Vimukta communities, and non bija Bahujan masses. All these communities have been in the process of rejecting caste hierarchies. They've been redefining themselves. We respect and value the dialectic that has gone on for two and a half centuries, and therefore we commemorate all the unsung actors involved in carrying forward this anti-caste legacy to be able to foster larger solidarities. Thus, in keeping this vibrant dialogue going and engaging with it, we decided to commemorate and celebrate the di diverse anti-caste histories. In doing so, we are also acknowledging the multiple solidarities that have already always existed in various anti-caste movements. Now, coming to today's session, as we all know that the caste and other oppressive structures mutually co-create new forms of violations for those who are oppressed and are, the are at the margins of the society. Today, our speaker and moderator will take us through how the COVID pandemic and caste combined to, together affect the frontline workers, the sanitation workers whose labor is now not, not only unrecognized and devalued, but due to the apathy of the caste state, these communities have been the worst hit by the pandemic. I'll introduce our moderator for today, Palashi Vagila is a Dalit feminist scholar, writer, poet, activist, and engineer. She is currently a PhD candidate, candidate in information science at Cornell University. Her research interests lie at the intersection of science and technology studies, social cult sociocultural anthropology, and feminist studies. Her dissertation is an ethnography and oral history study of gender and caste relations in, in the Indian computing industry. Her research has been supported by the Cornell, in Cornell Institute of Social Sciences, Mario Enodi uh, Center for International Studies, Social Science Research Council, Mellon Foundation, and the University of Saigon. Uh, she is a student and early career representative of the Feminist Scholarship Division of the International Communication Association. Palashi has been working at the intersection of society and technology for the last 10 years and practices critical hope in her work and life through the art of storytelling. It's an honor to have you Palashi and Kanti here. I invite Palashi to take this uh, session forward. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Swati. Uh, first, I want to thank Swati and Rupali for giving me the honor to moderate this talk and for the support from Sasa as Rosa. Luxembourg Stifting and the support of DBAV Collective that has brought us all together. Um, a brief introduction about Kanti's work. Kanti Swaroop is a PhD candidate at the Center for Policy Studies, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. His research focuses on sanitation and urban theory. And without further ado, I will hand over the mic to Kanti. Please take it away. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Palashi, Swati. Rupali and your fellow travelers at 
Sasas and Lilia Collective for organizing this lecture series. Am I audible? I hope I... Yeah, thanks. So uh, without much delay, I would like to share my screen. So uh, I hope this is visible. Yes. I do not need to tell how happy and uh, proud I am to share my research through a platform as prestigious as this annual Anticast Solidarities and Histories lecture series. And to be part of this kind of uh, stellar scholars and activists who constitute the previous and present roster. Given this opportunity, I want to draw your attention uh, to a finding or uh, insight, or I mean, more modestly, I think a thought that has not received sufficient uh, scholarly uh, treatment for some reason, uh, which is also partly in the title of our lecture series, uh, that is anti-caste. Uh, here, I do not simply mean anti-caste as one says customary, uh, which of course, uh, increasingly becoming a latest uh, buzz phrase across all domains, but what it is to be anti-caste today, or more, even more relevant or more precisely, uh, the relevance of anti-caste in contemporary sanitation discourse, since discursively anti-caste as an ideology, vision, and as politic, has received a mark of a special designation as a solution to impinging sanitation problem in India. So with this introduction, I would like to uh, go forward in contextualizing this caste and COVID-19 uh, yeah, so I, my talk will have the outline where, so with a brief contextualization of the problem uh, that will lead me to introduce or to, to introduce my research questions and the research questions uh, will try to uh, find some of the supporting uh, answers to the research questions supplied from the field and will offer some preliminary thoughts on recasting the sanitation work. Uh, you see the most uh, influential scholarly and journalistic approaches uh, to sanitation during early COVID-19 time tended to emphasize uh, the sacrifice of sanitation workers, uh, which foreclosed any possible debate on their rights. It's particularly important because uh, I think, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, it's particularly important that I want to stress on the right because in, in India, sanitation worker um, is, is not a universal labor category, is largely uh, derived from the notion and understanding of caste. Somebody who is recruited also. Uh, it's, a, it's a caste based work to put it uh, uh, in, in summary, one can simply say that it is a caste based work. Therefore, to talk about rights and duties of sanitation workers is uh, something of a rare opportunity and uh, COVID has provided a space, however slightly, uh, to put or uh, to even to talk sanitation on a new footing, a discourse and practice other than that of caste. But the scholarly framing of the sanitation problem in the times of COVID-19 pandemic it dominated a framework that echoes a discourse of critical anti-caste thought, uh, which says, uh, unless India overcomes the enduring injustice of caste, enduring problems in sanitation will persist. Which I do not disagree uh, with this insight underlying approach. But this prevailing thought uh, is predominantly shared by civil society activists uh, produced, which I argue a public uh, policy closure of sanitation problem in the times of its regenerative and transformative phase, uh, where excessive importance is given to the relationship between annihilation of caste and sanitation work, while play, paying little attention on the ways to revolutionize the culture of sanitation work. Uh, as, uh, as, as David Moss argues in Cast and Development in 2018 or even subsequently later uh, in, the, in his recent paper. So he also stresses on an important aspect which was neglected by the sustainable development goals where caste was not even taken into account. Uh, 
uh, when talking about discrimination, not particularly in the South Asian uh, context, but also South Asian diaspora, uh, staying staying in different places and caste still becoming a driving force for their oppression and discrimination, it was not considered. And one reason is this, Indian state considered uh, caste as archaic and not relevant, therefore not important to talk about. And, and at the same time, so there, there is also increasing literature on uh, post-liberal uh, India, so how market actually helped uh, Akio Tanabe talks about uh, egalitarian liberalism in the sense he critically uh, reflects on the egalitarian li li liberalism by saying that so it's not really egalitarian liberalism because using the traditional frameworks or seeing caste from the ritual uh, uh, framework, one cannot understand the market, and which David Moss also argues uh, in his recent paper that we need to have. Uh, something new and how market is at uh, in the age of market how, how how what is how to understand it so uh, building on such uh, insights i would like to uh, go forward in the discussion uh, also prioritizing the anti caste uh, thought anti caste as one understands uh, is largely a self explanatory term uh, featuring politics and practices of uh, lower caste Again, is the Brahminical hegemony, uh, so as to reimagine a scholar, uh, social world that is devoid of massive cultural differences, or simply in the telling of a scholar extraordinary, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, egalitarian society. And how the, the, the but also here, uh, the, the complex thing associated with this is, is anti caste, is, and one can also question that is anti how. Is anti caste society possible today? I mean, the one who uses and overuses caste, uh, in particularly lower caste, and mobilizes against the caste uh, as a response to this hegemony, can they be defined as anti caste? Or if anti caste is possible, so what it, it could be look like? Because it is increasingly taking the uh, central place in all the discourses and domains. So, uh, I mean, what is certain is to cast doubt on the possibility and realization of anti caste as it is envisaged. Because given it is increasingly getting limited at the ideological and political level, as such, a presupposing a framework, because even in sanitation, what is happening is that annihilation of caste is the all encompassing solution for a revolution in the uh, sanitation culture. And in fact, moreover, it is also in social and cultural space which I do not have any doubt on the relevance of caste in contemporary Indian society, uh, not only caste as a tradition, but also caste as a resource and its effects that are pervasive in the age of market and because which are believed to be uh, withering with the advent of say market or egalitarian liberalism. But uh, also in this talk, I will argue how caste remains a prominent uh, uh, frame of reference for defining the redefining sanitation work, especially during uh, pandemic and post-pandemic times. However, it will quickly be clear that I move beyond politicization and reification of caste uh, and argue that assemblage of caste and civil society and bureaucracy co-construct the policy process in post-liberalization post times, which eventually superimposed onto the policy making even in extraordinary times such as uh, COVID-19. By uh, anti caste, I'm referring here to a specific practice or particular politics uh, made fashionable over a two decade or three by a certain civil society, I'm saying certain civil society actors, especially NGOs in post liberal India, where taking the development sector took a sharp turn, uh, cultivating sympathy, uh, which does not materialize into any meaningful action, but um, over deepening the democracy. I mean, if I can borrow Arjuna Padra's. Uh, uh, work, um, but while addressing the social problems, particularly on injustice, exploitation, and discrimination, last but not the least, the various forms of untouchability, uh, that rather intended effect that produced uh, led without any list of caste, no social problem will be solved in India. So it, it, in fact, it became a frame of reference even during the COVID-19. Globally, you see, uh, so we have received, uh, we have we, we much has been heard about how 
So health workers ac across the world have been struggling in this precarious conditions or um, discussion on rights and duties. But when it comes to India, it was not only health workers, but uh, sanitation workers were also uh, in, also uh, also uh, featured in the discussion, and including police. So uh, in in the paper that we have argued, so we also uh, Joel Lee and I co-authored a paper for which is on EPW. So there we also argued that uh, from receiving and uh, taking our interlocutors, uh, hearing our interlocutors, we also have identified that they. So sanitation workers were also recognized as uh, one of the uh, uh, corona barriers and placed in the valued clusters of uh, public health, uh, uh, in, the public, in, the, in the national public health framework. Because one reason uh, is also that uh, uh, sanitation, we, we understand the, uh, the marginalization and uh, the inhuman treatment the sanitation worker in India receives. And the sanitation, it's also because of, uh, because caste still holds a bearing for sanitation. And uh, sanitation was not really out of uh, debate. Uh, you see, uh, manual scavenging is one of the practices uh, of uh, the worst practice of sanitation, uh, form of sanitation practice, uh, where we 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 still uh, expect the people to go inside the sewers uh, despite having a mechanization, and it is increasingly uh, a, a problem. Is the problem is the solutions for the problem are not doing any actual, not doing any positive effect. So. So we keep hearing news and every other day, uh, so people writing on it and uh, sanitation was not really out of uh, public debate. And that is also one of the reason why uh, so people emphasized uh, sanitation work during the COVID and also the nature of the work and the necessity and the extraordinary conditions that COVID-19 created. So therefore, I would like to stress my, uh, I would like to locate my talk at the interface of uh, past studies. And the pandemic studies, because uh, historically certain transformations of the sanitation work are also uh, triggered by disease, and several scholars and historians have actually documented about it. So, which I would like to stress. I mean, pandemic studies, I do not really uh, locate in the complete literature of pandemic studies, but I'm borrowing some of the relevant stuff. So, in this talk, the primary attempt is to provide an understanding of the shift in the treatment of sanitation workers by the state and the society they serve especially during the times of COVID-19 pandemic in India. Because as sanitation and sanitation work continue to remain in the public debate. So drawing from my fieldwork experience in Hyderabad, which, um, South India, and also considerably borrowing some of the arguments that we have already uh, made in the article that got published last year in EPW. So I'll try to contextualize today what bounds this discursive space, uh, especially in, in relation to the COVID-19 and explain different trends, which emerged as a, which emerged as a response to the pandemic. Today, the sanitation practices which dominated during pandemic that conceptually shifted the figure of a sanitation worker out of the framework of caste, seemingly into a framework of national public health, are going back to their older forms of association with dirt and filth. I consider the significant reversal of uh, sanitation work in the post-pandemic times and offer uh, preliminary insights towards uh, recasting uh, sanitation work. So some of the questions that I would like to engage today are what role does the globally circulating discourses and practices on sanitation play in reimagining the sanitation work during COVID-19 outbreak in India? And second, what exactly we can understand about sanitation work in India. So if we begin not with popular notion in bond by caste, but with the transformative turn it took, um, an exceptional case of COVID-19 pandemic, in which sanitation work was central and underwent recasting um, as a fear of contagion almost, but disappearing as it is winning, and it is uh, rapidly disappearing as you, uh, as you see here in India. So the kind of uh, attention the sanitation work got and, uh, and the current state of sanitation work as a fear of uh, contagion is disappearing. So uh, outbreaks of disease, see, have catalyzed uh, uh, what have been, sub what have subsequently been recognized as uh, public health revolutions, uh, transformations 
in both infrastructure and cultural behavior uh, that have concretely improved societal indicators while also reducing the stigma attached to the many forms of sanitation work. You see cholera epi epidemics in 1832 and 1849 uh, uh, actually ultimately spurred the construction of the sewer in uh, Second Empire Paris. And at the same time, uh, later, I mean, so in England, the fears of uh, cholera exacerbated uh, by the great stink of 1858, perceived given the miasmatic theory of disease, popular at the time uh, as a harbinger of plague, uh, led to a similar transformative overhauling. And the same deadly disasters uh, uh, later in New York uh, actually uh, transformed the New York uh, sanitation, uh, transformed New York sanitation uh, state with when uh, with uh, with the retired uh, military colonel taking over the sanitation duties, or uh, even during the Surat uh, ninety four plague, people argue that there's a mixed opinion on it whether it was really plague or not plague. So in the west of the nation. Asad Doran and Robin Jeffrey seemingly hinted as this diagnosed place, but later that Surat emerged as um, one of the places where public health was given uh, much importance. Uh, sorry, it's, I think there's a type of misdiagnosed plague. Uh, however, I mean, these are uh, uh, two complex uh, things, and uh, I'm not rushing to roman romanticize them, but to note, to note these examples is also to uh, highlight uh, the, some of the transformations carried out by imperial regimes that pursued discriminatory sanitation policies in their colonies, uh, even while deploying disingenuous discourse of civilization uh, to justify the results. It was where the mixed uh, results were there in the colony and uh, metropole. But not only that, but it got reproduced. For example, in India, post uh, uh, independent, we have uh, uh, embraced socialist vision and uh, socialist policies. But even the socialist labor practices that uh, disproportionately employed uh, Dalits to do the sanitation work. And in fact, uh, uh, in fact, we, uh, it's also non-Dalits refused to do the work. And even though they have uh, been appointed to do the sanitation work, and there were reports uh, across the states that they just uh, go and sign and they really do not do the real work or do some the work which is uh, not demeaning in the, in the, in the popular understanding. So these legacies actually have uh, reinforced and uh, transformed over the time through a, a variety of uh, discriminatory employment practices and also caste-based uh, segregation uh, took place. And moreover, uh, post-liberal uh, post India, the recruitment that used to happen transformed into procurement because the contractors came into the scene of uh, uh, sanitation. So instead of... Uh, recruiting the sanitation workers, although they do in a contract and outsourced basis, but uh, predominantly they outsource the work where they have to procure the worker. But uh, in the times of COVID-19, so, so the procurement or the recruitment uh, is, is one thing, procurement is one thing, but there is also a new dimension to it. It's like conscription. They simply conscripted uh, uh, conscripted Dalits, which uh, in, in, a, in the article that we designated as a Brahminical response. So by not giving, uh, by not providing safety gear or not even bothering uh, the hazardous nature of it and uh, trying to uh, not, not addressing uh, the, the imminent uh, danger in working in such conditions. So uh, here is an example which I, which, uh, which I want to uh, quote from the paper. So when the state issued a directive uh, to disinfect the public places uh, with lime powder as a COVID related preventive measure in April. So officials in a, a town uh, in Telangana and Andhra, so it's a, it's faced a problem because the post of sanitation worker having lain vacant uh, for years, there was no one prepared to carry out the order. So rather than turning to employees in the adjacent health department or indeed to an employee of the state, Town officials instead approached Suresh, a self-employed man of the locality. So why Suresh? Because he's a Dalit who earns his livelihood doing mortuary labor, digging graves and managing cremations on a private basis and septic tank maintenance for individual homes. So here, which I would like to argue that the presumption or the waste and death work must and will be performed with Dalits. The presumption of an ontological link between caste and occupation that disguises as intuitive 
the conscription of persons like suresh as frontline workers to meet public needs in a pandemic is a symptom of what joel lee and i argued uh, a brahmanical response to covid the conscription of dalit labor for pandemic related sanitation work and the denial of safety gear even under such extraordinary conditions point to continuity with the caste based mentality that continues to pervade state practices not only in our, uh, not only in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the town that i am referring to but also much uh, across uh, the india so but at the same time so there was also some amount of uh, recognition and appreciation for the sanitation work and the sanitation workers uh, took place who were routinely invisible and rendered uh, invisible so uh, because there some uh, spectacular uh, appreciation take have, have taken place where garlanding sweepers with uh, wreaths of flowers and bank notes and showering them with uh, uh, flower petals uh, from um, uh, above Uh, in fact, even in more in a dramatic way, uh, the helicopters of uh, Indian Air Force uh, uh, showered flowers, uh, fl- flowers, uh, flowers on the sanitation workers from uh, above. As a uh, and uh, as a response to it, uh, Saraswati uh, talks to us. She says that this is an unexpected love. Uh, because not so long ago she recalls that uh, they were constantly denied of drinking water but what is happening now is totally different and uh, then she she uh, she wants to question that uh, why only now this act this transformation took place during covid 19 uh, but why it, it did not uh, uh, why it was not there earlier when sanitation workers are dying in sewers and manholes so none of them i mean she argues that none of them spoke about ppe and then why so but she also says that recognition is important and it has to be welcomed uh, and it's also not in in the case of in hyderabad but also in north india for example lucknow so uh, the municipal authorities have provided uh, protective gear and uh, gloves to sanitation workers which they have not received in their lifetime even at least for one and they have received for the first time but at the same time these are also random uh, sometimes the vests they provide for the sanitation workers are famous for not taking account of their size so simply sometimes they become unwearable uh, but at the same time there was also an interesting uh, 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 societal response where a kind hearted people uh, in hyderabad particularly donated and uh, so um, workers talked to talk to us and says that the kind hearted people gave us some uh, um, donated masks and gloves continuously um, and they find it hard to see us working in these uh, insane conditions because this last observation which points to the discomfort of swath of uh, society which we argue at seeing sanitation workers perform their labor with adequate protection because this is new and uh, we also noted that uh, workers have been laboring unprotected in hazardous conditions all along uh, however uh, however but however this kind of a treatment this 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 kind of a treatment some public that has now taken like hyderabad the shop owners began to take the cognizance of this injustice of the, the situation and they also said that you are uh, uh, corona warriors and showed uh flowers and it says that the, 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 the complete response from the sanitation workers was that this is a massive recognition and which they haven't ever uh, uh, think about in fact it, it's also important that recognition recognition also recognition also matters but the, the i want to connect this with the public policy closure of sanitation problem which i have indicated in, in the first few minutes of my discussion so while there are generative and transformative phases so the entire discussion or entire emphasis during the covid time was stressed on uh, on on the annihilation of uh, caste so by not addressing this uh, complexities particularly the generative and transformative so because of that i mean i i also argue that so when the virus have been fading when there was not much of uh, em- emphasis was laid on these things so and or from the advocacy groups or some advocacy uh, coalitions or activist uh, traditions so it was not much uh, 
it was not it was not actively or consciously taken up by the state not that state is very much ready to do it but at least the effort was uh, effort was effort was not effort was not uh, no, effort, this this kind of effort was not um, visible at least and uh, there was also a typical uh, gandhian res re response uh, where uh, for example uh, so talking about uh, gandhi so he consistently conveyed you know so sympathy for the bangi and how ideal bangi should be like and he all this is also a term that he insisted uh, despite uh, the repeated uh, uh, despite their despite the sweepers and the sanitation workers stated dislike for the term and the, he emphasized the importance and dignity of the sanitation labor while at the same time also opposing the strikes of uh, exp expressing their reluctance uh, to adopt uh, he he was a uh, he was a he was a front runner who actually uh, uh stopped i mean in fact expressed his reluctance to adopt new sanitation technologies and also asserted that ideal bangi must consider his work as a sacred duty and not dream of amassing uh, wealth out of it but because it as a result of this uh, so when we talk about the socialist policies who which continued post independent and it is also some uh, kind of a gandhian extension so why sanitation policies uh, continue to employ dalits because he uh, he institu he institutionalized this in fact gandhi himself and set the agenda for the first several decades of uh, sanitation uh, policy and in fact these garlands what we argue also echo uh, gandhi's famous stints that he used to do in his residence in the quarters of sanitation workers in uh, delhi which are merely for cultivating sympathy and uh, does not actually translate into any meaningful action and moreover so workers also argue that uh, the flowers that thrown at thrown at them uh, you know so are uh, are to be uh, swept by them once uh, this drama ends and in fact these uh, these th it's also point to a different kind of an irony that the uh, indian air force helicopters which uh, actually uh, showered the flower sh showered flowers petals on them um, or very expensive but if you talk about uh, the infrastructure or the kind of uh, tools that sanitation workers currently uh, handle with there is a clear differential we can clear we can point out to the uh, point out to the, the differential uh, the differential investment and in the military and the sanitation technology so uh, and there are notable changes that have that took place during covid 19 which was uh, uh, which are uh, which are worth uh, noting for example uh, salaries were paid on time and uh, which was very unusual and some of the incentives were given in telangana government gave bonus for 2 3 months continuously and then also they stopped uh, the discontinued it and telangana cm chief minister chandra uh, k uh, chandrashekar uh, rao himself uh, also included uh, the sanitation worker and called sanitation worker together however the politics uh, uh, that that actually instigated him, uh, him to make such a, uh, make such make make such statements but at the same time it was also worth noting the kind of transformation or the shift which actually the disposition of uh, a sanitation worker from the frame of caste and seemingly into national uh, national public health where in some of the places where shopkeepers also donated and they, they they were philanthropic and offered discounts and uh, so societal interactions between workers and uh, others were also uh, began and in fact it used to take this quite often and in fact moreover the in domestic places the segregation of the waste is a, a serious matter of concern the liquid and uh, solid waste and the households and domestic uh, level at the source so they do not do it i mean there is there many people i mean so many policies and many behavioral and nudging things have done at the municipality level city level or national level to segregate the waste but in some places uh, segregation of waste took place at the at the source level that sanitation workers themselves reported and in some places uh, waste management uh, happened at the individual level so in some villages and towns where they used to put up the waste in the community uh, areas so stopped doing it and uh, started burning the waste in their own uh, in, the, in their in their vicinity 
and however it is also because of uh, the contagion or the virus or that to it but the change in the behavior the understanding of uh, engaging with the waste actually have changed uh, actually have transformed but the whole point is whether that was captured or that was captured in the captured in the advocacy moment or not is the question that we need to ask ourselves so which which leads me to talk about uh, this recasting of uh, sanitation work so recasting of sanitation work simply i i mean that so it the sanitation work has to be understood in a more professional way that uh, that uh, that there should be a new paradigm in 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 in, in defining and redefining the sanitation work by taking taking out the sanitation worker from the frame of, frame of caste and trying to talk from the universal understanding of labor where there are rights and then once you start talking about the rights and there is the opportunity to talk about the duties so instead of uh, 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 i mean what i mean to say is that so uh, this uh, uh, i mean i again i mean i do not disagree uh, with Uh, the anti-cast approach, uh, but at the same time, a careful scrutiny of the last century of sanitation practice in India, so re- reveals that it could be misused. The simply saying the annihilation of caste, a consensus that caste problem would be fixed uh, before other problem in sanitation are addressed, can also provide a cover for it more uh, difference of the most basic workers' right. and it could also take pressure of uh, municipalities and for example even to provide minimal uh, uh, safety gate to sanitation workers and also to overhaul untenable sewer, uh, sewer lines and sewage uh, lines where so sanitation workers die almost on a routine basis not that if we do not stress annihilation of caste that uh, governments or municipalities are uh, going to do it but in a policy uh, in a policy process so how do we balance this ideology and politics so what could be the more pragmatic way of dealing this uh, dealing this sanitation problem that instead of waiting for annihilation of caste so uh, shall we postpone addressing the sanitation problem is a question that i'm going to pose therefore we would like to argue that uh, the necessity of simultaneously contending with social and infrastructural aspects not just one uh, of sanitation since uh, covid-19 actually brought into play the global globally circulating dispersion practice because phenomenal change in the sanitation took place and uh, sanitation workers uh, were uh, were wearing uh, protective equipment and they were supplied with uh, almost on a regular basis and in some places uh, uh, a in some places uh, they were also provided uh, transportation uh, to their work site and which was not which was not happened earlier but at the same time there was also uh, a there was also downside to it that uh, they were just treated during the, the, those extraordinary times because they also want to get labor from them for example to the sanitation workers in hyderabad were asked i think it's much in many places as well even uh, in haryana even in hyderabad so sanitation workers were asked to cremate the uh, cremate the cremate the bodies infectious ones particularly and uh, the sanitation workers were paid extra for doing the duty and why sanitation workers were asked to do that job is again is a question that we also have to think about it but during the time so municipalities actually treated them well and one interlocutor of mine says that they they gave good food from every morning to evening and they put them in a nice place not allowing to mix with people because they are engaging with dead bodies so here i mean there is also state in a one inter, one way of interpreting is also that state taking care of them but at the other side of the other other interpretation is also because they want to it's also more like you know so trying to Uh, just taking for granted that they'll do uh, labor of whatever whichever the kind because so they just uh, need money or you know so we can exploit them but one one important uh, uh, thing that i i would like to argue is that when we want to talk about sanitation work i it's also uh, there's a rise after having lot of uh, 
con confrontations or even research. So he comes to this conclusion that it is, uh, if we keep talking about the caste in the sanitation work, we keep talking about it. Uh, I mean, annihilation of caste isolation, we keep talking about it. Rather than let us uh, talk, think about ways of how taking caste out of sanitation work, but not the worker out, uh, worker from it. Simply the rhetoric is that ban it and etc. But uh, let us, because sanitation work, we need a uni universally in every country we have sanitation workers. So why, why, why we have uh, sanitation workers? But even in India, we need it. But what is important? What, what makes it complex is because of our caste, uh, the caste that makes it complex, or the urban uh, infrastructures that are actually following the logic of caste or the urban planning and urban policies that are reproducing the, the same. Uh, um, uh, the, the similar, uh, co I mean, uh, the similar trite of uh, 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 and so following the logic of caste of making the problem more complex. And in, in fact, in post COVID, you see the members of non scavenging caste and non Dalits join the, the sanitation work, uh, particularly also there is an increasing tendency of mechanization by sewer works for hap happening. So, but there is also a change that is happening. So what I would like to argue here is that this, uh, uh, this transformation that is happening here during COVID-19 uh, could be seized uh, and uh, experimented for a revolution in sanitation culture. The anti-caste thought that surrounding sanitation, especially during COVID-19, I feel has slightly neglected the aggregated effects of different generative phenomena to constantly redefine the form and meaning of sanitation work that is now rapidly eroding the report, eroding as a fear of viruses winning. So this neglect uh, produced a discursive exclusion of an emerging pattern and also formed a public policy closure of sanitation uh, uh, that could have been reworked on the present sanitation discourse to advance a culture of public health uh, not based on caste. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk and happy to chat and engage more. And I thank my, uh, and I thank Rosa Luxembourg Stifting and uh, Sasas and BB AV Collective, Swati, Palashi and Rupalil for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you for a lovely talk. And I, as I was, um, we've, I've had a chance to kind of engage with your work um, much more in the last couple of weeks. And I am really excited by the opening of possibilities that your work is generating for particularly taking the conversation between caste and sanitation from being a predetermined one to being something else. And so maybe I will just pose one question before taking uh, questions from the audience. And I request everybody to please use the Q&A box um to pose questions um and uh, my question probably to you is has to do with the tension that um you outlined but maybe taking it uh zooming out of it a little bit just in the case of sanitation work but also thinking about sanitation work in COVID times as a specific form of case study that you have really well um, articulated in your work is that do you do you see that there are um, do, do you think there are idealist the idealistic uh, stances within the movements that we are seeing um, for and um, on behalf of or advocating for sanitation work do you think that they're disconnected from the pragmatics of what does it mean for material change and survival and caste and labor to come together to achieve the dream of you know what anti-caste um, futures look like so if you could kind of and also if uh, your interlocutors have given you a sense of what they feel about annihilation of caste and if that relates to your own understanding of and, and pushing back against the overwhelming anti-caste discourse that as you rightly mentioned forecloses the policy possibilities. I would love to hear something about that, please. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, yes, I mean, see, uh, for example, to talk about uh, sanitation work, I think it is important or even prominent to stress on the recruitment aspect of it. Uh, for example, recruitment of sanitation worker does not merely happen checking the eligibility criteria or 
something else and the only qualification is just you have to you have to be from that particular caste so then obviously it is understood that uh, so you will be a sanitation worker and not even that in fact even the the people in the community so who scale to a different heights in the social imagination even though they are not doing the sanitation work they are considered as sanitation workers it's a more it's a culturalistic thing i think this uh, the tension between if i want to address the question uh, directly so the uh, so it, it 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 i think it is important to stress for the change in the way the recruitment practices are now taking place so to quote one example that coming from my field my field uh, so a, a retired engineer who happened to be also from the scheduled caste and he argues that so uh, whenever so there was some uh, on a policy table or a discussion that when activists and others uh, and engage uh, in the question related to the welfare of sanitation workers and livelihoods so they increasingly stress uh, to address the comp the address address the ways to eradicate the caste and he simply mean it that okay so this is possible and possible in the sense it has to be uh, dealt from uh, out of the purview of the state this is problem that is related to the society so if uh, this is going to be the thing if if they come with the similar kind of an understanding that we are we will we will enter into a discursive impasse uh, that nothing is going to happen we always talking about this and we are talking about that so in more to be constructive that uh, in what ways the sanitation could be uh, revolutionized in the transformative transformative time and trying to come up with some universal understanding of uh, sanitation work that we have now actually some of the collaborative projects in sanitation let's say the fecal sludge treatment plants and even the mechanization that is happening increasingly across the cities in hyderabad are coming up with uh, some universal uh, standard operating procedures so uh, which could be actually the i'm not saying so the, the, the like this things could things could be experimented and i think this 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 also uh, answers uh, one of the question anonymous attendee who asked uh, a similar question perhaps yes the question is what could or should be concrete actions and by whom should they be taken to take caste out of sanitation work instead of recasting of it again yeah um yeah i think you address it in do, do you want to add something to it uh, no no but maybe i will uh, if if i keep uh, taking some more questions then i can address perhaps better yeah so uh, thanks for answering my question and also hopefully this is answered uh, the question that we just read out loud i know i can see that a lot of questions are coming in so yes. um i'm going to start with um uh siddhan chandra's question and their question is could you tell us the gender breakdown of sanitation workers and how much are sanitation workers paid and how does it compare to other physical jobs like factory jobs there are three questions there mm -hmm. yes so uh, here in hyderabad so here it is the case so most of the sweeping jobs are uh, predominantly uh, done by women Uh, workers more than ninety percent of the sweeping jobs in Hyderabad are by women, and that that too particularly from Dalit caste. And uh, remaining ten percent are uh, men, but uh, it's it's also they also I did not engage much with the sweep, sweeping uh, sweepers because my area of research is to focus on the sewage and sewer workers. And coming to the uh, salaries, so now they are getting uh, around fifteen to sixteen thousand. So earlier. Uh, during covid they used to get 12000 and they got enhancement of uh, 4 to 5000 it's uniform so across and uh, so compared to physical jobs like uh, factory jobs uh, factory jobs are it, it, it basically they i mean so it's, it's around one cannot I, i mean based on the nature of uh, the area that you work in a factory the salary varies so i do not really have a figure 
but i think it will be something uh, similar to the similar to it yeah unfortunately i also don't know what the yeah. remuneration for a factory job is if anybody in the audience is aware of it please do share it in the chat and we can compare um what kanthi just told us so um going on with the next question is that good yeah sure okay uh the next question is how do the dalit sanitation workers feel about people from outside taking over their jobs so maybe they they mean outside of the caste i i think or that's that's my interpretation mm. so uh it's uh, it's kind of mixed for example uh, they they also want to unionize uh, dalit sanitation workers but uh, uh sadly but there is also lack of uh, consolidation and because there are a lot of uh, political uh, unions which have their own interest and which have their own uh, objectives so but uh, but one common thing is that they um, it's 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 again mixed so, so two persons who who with whom i had interactions that whether they are uh, what do you think about others mixing with you and but the thing is again so it is a very recent phenomenon so this this started to happen as far as i i i know it it, it started to happen after 20 uh, 20 and particularly in the sewage work that is also because of uh, uh, mechanization and also covid because covid actually took out a lot of uh, uh, lot of everyday uh, so i mean for example auto drivers could not pay they could not repay the loan so uh, they have join this work because they can simply drive trucks and they do not have to do the sewage job but there are also people who are doing the job actually but at the same time um so they some of them also do not feel any bad about it and they say that now everybody is coming so it means they find it uh, more dignified the job is um Uh, but at the same time so two other interlocutors also say that so if they keep coming it i mean they keep coming into the uh, sector so it is also because this is only left for us because we do not have much literature and we do not have much capital so it might be a, a problem for us so if they also keep occupying this job so it's tension and again but uh, yeah yeah it reminds me of the tension you also talk about the visibility Yeah. question where the visibility comes at the cost of like also performative actions by the state but yes. at the same time it is important that this work is made visible um Absolutely. and so yeah there are no straightforward answers i think to the tension of recasting or decasting sanitation mm -hmm. work um i will go to the next question it's a little long um but the I, i'll i'll read the shorter version of it and if it's not okay. enough then maybe we can uh read the whole question i think the core of the question is trying to ask if there are parallels between what you're observing in your work with sanitation workers and how the state um and other entities are treating them with mm -hmm. uh, there is a parallel with how neoliberal corporations frame workers as gig workers and thus deny them systemic location as workers okay so so conscription uh, i i meant in a very specific uh, sense here uh, in, in 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 the in the topic that i'm talking about so where they take things for granted i mean when there is an impending danger so you want somebody to be doing this work staying on the front line so uh, it was uh, basically in in the in the example that i have uh, mentioned in my talk is from a village where rural elite so decided that so when in the during i mean due to the lack of uh, formal sanitation work so you do the private job of sanitation work so you are and uh, and uh, and you should do it there is no other go because you are the only person in our community so who digs graves and also do uh, maintenance of uh, septic tanks of individuals so what is wrong in asking it so i we are using conscription in that sense but i am really not sure uh, what is happening at the big work yeah i think the person is also i mean the person who is asking the question has given 
um, a lot of context. So maybe I'll just read it out because I yeah. think that, I mean, we don't have to uh, answer the question further, but I think they also theorize about their question a little bit. So their uh, point is about regarding the conscription of sanitation workers, uh, would you find it reasonable to see a parallel with how neoliberal corporations frame workers as gig workers? Or I, I know that you talk a little bit about contract workers and contractual labor in sanitation work in your work somewhere else. Um, and thus denying the systemic location to the workers as the very backbone to the business and denying them justice as employees entitled to safety frameworks and employee benefits. Um, gig work corporations also do this individual glorification of workers instead of improving conditions fairly for them. Um, any responsibility of hazard is to be taken on by the workers. They are treated as though they choose the work. And so it is their lot to bear any risk. This seems to tie in with how caste is framed. Um, I think that they're, they're also theorizing along with the question a little bit. And I think they were just looking to kind of uh, get your response on it. But it seems like what the point you made about the choice also being obvious that, oh, I mean, and it's a little different from the gig work, right? Like there is the conscription is happening also on the basis of caste, which may or may not be the case with gig work. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, there is a similarity that I am hearing you talk about with the question of, you know, oh, it, it, you must be doing it, right? Like you must want this work. And like, this is the obvious thing to do. And this is, I mean, you will bear any risk to, that comes with it because of the fact that, you know, you ought to do this work kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah, um, maybe then moving on to the next question from uh, Malini. Uh, during COVID, there have been demands by sanitation workers in Hyderabad for more permanent employment rather than the precarious labor contract procurement system. I think the, it's a question. So I think have yeah. there been demands? Yeah. Uh, maybe you answer that first and then I'll take the next question. Yes, I, have, really I think they have two. Yes, yes. Okay, so does the entry of non dalits into sanitation work help to take caste out of it in quotes, um, take out of sanitation work, and do you see this trend continuing into the future? Okay, great. I'm glad Malini is attending. So, uh, yes, so there have been uh, demands by sanitation workers in Hyderabad, for example, so sanitation workers stage protest. Uh, of sanitation workers of uh, uh, Gandhi hospitals staged continuous protests for two, three days that they do not do their jobs unless the jobs are made permanent. And um, it is not, not only the sanitation workers of Gandhi hospital, but uh, taking the inspiration from them and they are at uh, several places in Hyderabad. So sanitation workers demanded for regularization as a but instead of doing regulation, the state government enhanced their salaries. So, so from uh, I mean from twelve thousand to sixteen and a half thousand is the result of that. And the entry of uh, Dalits, non-Dalits into sanitation work helped to take caste out of sanitation work. Do you see this trend continuing into the future? So taking cast out of the sanitation work is also, I mean to say that, so making the sanit making sanitation work also not more stigmatized. Uh, and one way of doing it is professionalizing, but I mean, anybody can, uh, I mean, even when, even when Dalits are doing the sanitation work, they should not feel that they are doing some cast operation. So rather they are doing, uh, rather they are doing a professional work. And of course, the integration of uh, non-Dalits non uh, doing sanitation work is also bringing certain uh, social changes in the social relationship. For example, that I've been to this field work where this OBC person joined the, the sewage workers. So, um, and this person um, uh, shares his lunch and uh, so uh, we'll go out with them and we'll travel with them, we'll talk to them. And when I, when I have spoken to them, then so how do you feel the integration of you with the sanitation workers? He says that, uh, so, so I, I, these are my colleagues and uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, uh, I want to be professional here. 
I think certain, so sociologically speaking, I think uh, certain relationships and uh, other exchanges and uh, many other things would actually change. Uh, but we also have to see uh, whether this is, uh, I mean, how, because again, the, prop, prop, the point is uh, the ones who are uh, contractualizing this uh, uh, machines in sewage world, but also Dalits who do not have history of scavenging, but uh, scavenging caste were again deployed to do the labor. So there is also untouchability here among the Dalits. I'm not uh, so intra caste untouchability. I'm, I'm completely um, conscious of that. But to how long this, uh, uh, and what are the other opportunities to take out is also, I think is very much uh, uh, is also very much uh, the investment of uh, caste leaders particularly from those communities who actually can voice out what uh, uh, what they are actually looking for in the culture of uh, sanitation so that could be the central i mean that could be central to taking um, i mean recasting sanitation work. Okay, uh, then the next question is, were there any differences in the conditions of sanitation workers between more industrialized and less industrialized states um, as opposed to cities? For example, are they better organized and have more bargaining power in the former than the latter? Are there more non-Dalit workers in the former than the latter? Okay, too many questions. <laughs> so, um but if you see, i mean the context of uh, sanitation for for in india you see there are uh, primarily two three point of views one is from a critical um, anti manual scavenging thing which is led by safai karamchari Andalan, so pan india movement so that gives a glimpse of the scavenging the state of sanitation and scavenging but other is uh, the moment you say sanitation uh, in India, sanitation work or sanitation work, which is also the North Indian Valmikis. So, which you tend to see is how consolidated they are, and uh, so their politics and etc. But in when it comes to South India, they are disconnected um, with this consolidation, despite uh, uh, being Madigas, for example, in Hyderabad. This, disproportionately and majority of the sanitation workers from, from the caste. And they also led the single uh, biggest non-violence movement of our times for uh, uh, categorization, which surprisingly failed to consolidate uh, uh, when it comes to sanitation work and the voice out the demands. So that is, which is uh, interesting. In fact, I am trying to address some of the uh, possible reasons of it. And um, uh, coming to the non-Dalit workers, so it is very rare to find a non-Dalit worker in uh, sanitation, doing sanitation work. And it is very, even though you find them, I mean, uh, so research and evidence says that they hardly do the work. Um, although they do the work, they do work which does not, uh, does not involve them to do the real work like clearing I mean, putting in many WC systems that ordering um, the space, but, but they engage with more pure elements such as, you know, so uh, sweeping floors of the office rather than sweeping uh, roads or streets, etc. So there is a segregation or a stratification, one can say, in the way non dalits and Dalits do the work. But uh, yeah, so it's very rare. Uh, this, uh, this phenomenon because it's also important to understand. But if it is happening, then it is an important insight to see that why non Dalits are now started doing the work. It's also important to listen to them in, in what context that they, I mean, in what way that they contextualize their presence in this uh, sector. Um, may I ask, like, what have you learned from your interaction with the very few? upper crust or, or, or like, you know, a non-Dalits who have entered the profession, like what is the, why did they join the work? 
so uh, one uh, reason so two there, there are two uh, uh, the most recent uh, ones that i uh, spoke to them one is because he has to pay his uh, auto debt that he has borrowed uh, and covid has stopped that he couldn't apply his offer therefore somebody told you can why don't you use your driving skills you know driving and uh, you can go as a driver for the sewage maintenance truck and going as a driver to sewage maintenance truck it doesn't mean that uh, it's always driving but uh, you are also expected to operate the gates and uh, handling pipe it's it's quite comfortable uh, for him as far as uh, he used to tell him we had repeated interactions for more than 2 3 months so where so he was comfortable doing the job and the one one conversation so he himself says that it's it's, uh, it's it's like any other job that i'm finding it not at all problematic but at the same time uh, uh, and the other person who have migrated from his village again due to the covid because i'm trying to contact uh is co- a post covid i found uh, these actually uh, cases uh, in fact and people started doing the sanitation work. so prior to that i did not encounter many i have encountered one or two but they all retired so because they were these were public uh, these were government jobs they have took up and they did for some time and then they outsourced it but and now they have retired okay uh we have a couple more questions and then we have uh do people who raise their hands um I, do you feel yeah. good to go should sure, i proceed sure 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 okay uh we have a question from purna i feel that the entire discourse of providing amenities or safety gear is a trap that never transcend beyond cast and the idea of purity pollution sanitation is an ignored area because it is done by dalits and which reinforce their outcastness if it were to be mechanized which it should be and it sounds like it is starting to be also mm-hmm. um and if there were to be more incentives would savarna take up sanitation work um so i not sure about it but again see the thing is so uh, for example in one of the communication that i heard that so if they take up the job for example uh, uh, this delhi government when they initiated this uh, they recruited only or they actually introduced the scheme and only for the scavenging cats uh, this mechanization so they are, they encouraged uh, that is to apply for that scheme but again the what the, the thing was i mean in the conversations that they have said so it is oh, and ask so why do you want to take up this job and why don't you consider it as a kind of liberation so where do we want to, where do we have to go and at the same time if we do not take up this job so we will we will be again we will be again employed as a laborer <coughs> but if we take up the scheme so we can become entrepreneurs we can both become entrepreneurs and live um and uh, the key in delhi indian chamber of commerce and industries is actually streamlining uh something on this front by converting labor to entrepreneurs but which has to take lot of i mean which lot of has lot of work has to be done but i am but there is also a possibility that uh, so upper caste could uh, monopolize because they simply have to do this contract uh they can do simply the contract and outsource it to labor once it becomes a more contractual they will have more flexibility these people will have more flexibility because they can outsource it all this so if it is regular or if it is state then obviously if you are recruited you will be doing it now because they are also introducing biometric and etc so but of course there are ways they way they can evade and they can still they can still be uh, replaced by somebody else but uh, but but if it is contractual then the case is uh, always uh, there is a, there is it's not guaranteed always that they really do the work okay uh we're going to switch gears a little bit <laughs> and uh, ask uh, people who raise their hands to unmute themselves and um ask their question first we'll take rafael's question uh, rafael if you would please unmute yourself thank you can you hear me yeah go ahead please 
Okay, yes. thank you, thank you, Mr. Sok, for your nice presentation. Before I'm proceeding, let me put clear that I'm from Tanzania. And uh, I'm glad to hear your presentation as you sensitize the importance of this sanitation record over the world. And let me tell you that in my university currently since yesterday, we have, we have started exhibitions and I'm trying to show the importance of the sanitation workers since I'm doing the master of sanitation management and currently I'm doing sanitation, exploring the health risks of the sanitation workers. And uh, let me say that the coming of COVID-19 over the world brought or put clear the importance of sanitation workers around the world. And uh, as this emergence comes, the only people allowed to go there and then in the street, mostly was sanitation workers, because they are so important to our health, important to our environment, important to everything. So we need these sanitation workers to be bored, we need them to be advocated, so that they can be very proud from their process they are doing every day to protect the public health. And uh, Mr. Kansu have said that uh, sanitation workers that we must take cast of, out of this work, that take cast out of sanitation work, but not work from it. But if it would be you, I would say that this, since people, they are very important to our life and our daily process. I would like to, to share with you that, oh, according to my opinion, we need to formalize this kind of work. We need to tell our shareholders, we need to tell our government that these sanitation workers must be recognized since they are playing a vital role in public health. They must know that this, this these are work, like other works. These are employment, they are like, like other employment. So the inch of inhibiting them, the inch of being antagonist, antagonizing to them, creating vulnerable environment to their condition. Hence, we need this occupation to be formalized and uh, professionalized. Yeah, um, I agree with you, Rafael. I think yeah, it is important to professionalize and formalize so across the countries. So uh, thanks for sharing your insights from your place. Um, thank you, Rafael, for that insight. I uh, see that. The person who is next, who's been sorry, I'm just trying this to check. This should be identified. Oh, I think they were. Yeah. Maybe. I think the the question they wanted to ask if we should identify them as formalized workers, yeah. Yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think your your argument is exactly that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, Rafael, we lost you for. A bit in the end. Uh, the next person that I would like to invite to unmute is Girija Gurkuli, please. Girija, are you there? Maybe. Okay, maybe in the meantime, we can take another question from the yes. Q&A. Yes. And maybe if they come around, they can uh, unmute themselves. Okay, so um, this is a question from Sally Kavud. Um, thank you for this very interesting talk. Do you think there is value or danger and or danger in grouping sanitary workers together when the work could range from road sweeping, solid waste collection, and hospital cleaning to sewer, toilet, and septic tank cleaning. 
Though there are overlaps, the division of work tasks can also be highly gendered and encompass intracaste differences, as you say. You know, absolutely. And um, in fact, uh, but the, the thing is, see, sanitation work again is not, uh, uh, although it's not defined clearly. So what role sweepers have to do? On roads, if uh, there is a dead animal and the uh, sweeper, sweeper is expected to take that, uh, speaker, I mean, take, take out the animal or maintain the, maintain the cleaning of the street. So it's the sweeper's task is not really again sweeping, but also on the on the and the allocated space. So whatever whatever is impure or I mean whatever is unhygiene is expected to maintain maintained and managed by the sweeper. That way, uh, it's 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 this this is not particularly uh, compartmentalized that this your work is this and your work is that. And interestingly, what happens is that so they are, you know, they are the sweepers in Hyderabad are, uh, are in fact was told not to sweep the uh, sand or s sand on the road, which is they have to take what is above the ground only, take the litter or whatever that sort, because the the manholes or the openings are just, you know, I mean, they are shallow, so that when they sweep the dirt, there is a possibility that the silt and the sludge formation happens uh, in, uh, uh, in sewer lines and which in turn will actually uh, create blockages for the sewer blockages of the sewer lines. But it is difficult for the sweeper to actually clear the litter. Now, so this is all interconnected again. Um, yes, the division of uh, work tasks can also be highly, yes, as I, as I have actually mentioned in the sweeping, for example, so more than 90% of the employees are in Hyderabad are women. But when it comes to sewage work, despite the uh, mechanization wave and the kind of, but, but not despite the mechanization, I mean, so want to go inside the sewers, it's always been the job of men, but it's not just uh, women were all, women earlier used to be uh, on the surface, carrying the sludge and, and trudging to the uh, place where she can convert that into heat. So, yes, and the intra caste differences, of course, they are very much so, not so uh, dehumanizing and uh, not, so de not so dehumanizing jobs are so performed by caste, which are slightly upward in the ritual order and uh, vice versa. Yeah. Um, okay, then the next question. Um, well, there's one which is a quick one that had come earlier and I'm sorry I hadn't uh, noticed it. Um, is sanitation job considered skilled work or treated as unskilled labor? It's treated as unskilled labor. Okay. Um, okay, then the next. I mean, it's, it's called as caste occupation, so which is not even skilled or unskilled. But, but it's. Maybe yeah, I, mean, I think the policy term is. Yeah, policy term is. Uh, yeah, policy term is unskilled. It's not skilled. They mm -hmm. are not record. They are not the contractual or outsourcing. Whenever that happens, so they are contracted or outsourced uh, as uh, unskilled labor. Okay. Um, the next question is anonymous. Um, even in the light of non-scavenging and non-Dalit workers entering the sanitation work, doesn't it point more towards the role of caste than less? As in, when the demand rises and the availability of workers from scavenging castes decreases, the COVID, uh, sorry, the workers from non-scavenging Dalit castes entering the field, followed by workers from lower OBCs. So uh, I think that maybe the question is a little bit about hmm. uh, is the is the trend that you're seeing talking about like is it is it is it actually recasting the work or is it hmm. entrenching caste more and more the way it has been so far? But what is also interesting here is to say that um, uh, it's it's more to do with the network, uh, the ones who enter into any occupation, particularly in, in a more private sector or uh, in current uh, age of uh, market, it is much to do with the uh, network, with whom you share your network and uh, understanding that need and the network. So they will provide some opportunity for you to work. 
so obc is uh, coming and not minding taking the taking up the job is one reason is that they know somebody who is going to give them some job come what may what out the job that they want to do for for that point of time because i am i am i am trying to contextualize from the representative sample that i have which is two or hardly three where so they know somebody uh, where they can where they know somebody where there was an opportunity for them to so it it all happened in that sense that so we need some job right now so we would like to do we would like to do it and they have been doing it for past 8 9 months and they're still continuing and uh, the point is if we see this from the framework of caste and it be, it, it it is slightly exciting that uh, new people are trying to come but if we try to slightly um, uh, raise it to the level of uh, Uh, work, so some integration is also happening that mixed and diverse people are uh, trying to do, and it's also because of the changing nature of uh, social relations outside, not just within the sanitation work, but also outside the sanitation work, where people are okay. I mean, they are finding it okay to do this work, and there is some acceptance to it. It also points to the uh, changing. Uh, Uh, changing, uh, changing understanding of the work, not just as a work, but also the characteristic of the work that actually uh, that actually transformed because of uh, some outer, uh, I mean, the changes that are happening in the outer space. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, you've mentioned several examples where it's not very straightforward. But what is interesting. specifically is the change in perception even if performative at this stage because it's quite early in the entry of a, um of non dalits into this space i think the changing perception is what you are hopeful for also and and i think that 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 is an opening that you think we should um look at if we are to truly think about dissociating or recasting um the sanitation work Okay, so the next question um, is by Mito. Mm -hmm. To what extent is it true that upper caste sanitation employees are taking up jobs of permanent nature, but then outsourcing them to SE persons on a much less salary? I think you spoke about this a little bit, but I think uh, they want yeah. to. No, it used to be the case because now you do not see uh, recruitment uh, for formal recruitment uh, practices of for sanitation work. So now they are actually. replacing it with uh, somebody for example i am retiring a retiring sanitation work bequeaths a job to one of their children or they can nominate a some person so uh, it's now it is increasingly private increasingly getting privatized the sanitation work it used to be the case and uh, uh, there are uh, even the in the book the right to sanitation in india which uh, was published in 2019 which 19 One nineteen, so they indicated they 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 talk about uh, how upper caste uh, uh, outsource the work to uh, scheduled caste from their uh, research finding in the states of UP and Rajasthan. Even Joy Lee has uh, uh, written about it in in his thesis. So if somebody is interested, um, based on his field work in Uttar Pradesh. so it used to be the case i mean it uh, which was uh, which is getting i mean because if somebody got recruited uh, uh, during the formal recruitment days if they are keep if they are continuing and they are doing it but increasingly now it is getting privatized and i i don't think from my field that i have seen that okay i think we have uh, time for one last question and that is rupali's actually Uh, Rupali asks, um, "Could you please share gendered aspects of sanitation work, different experiences of female and male sanitation workers that you came across in your work?" Yes, so uh, it's um, there is a profound uh, gendered. Uh, it's completely gendered, as I have already. Uh, spoken uh, at several addressing several things from the from my field um, and also from the literature that I have gone through, but at the at, at the same time because because of uh, this 
uh, because of sanitation work so there is there are addictions and these addictions are uh, these addictions are differential uh, for men uh, they earlier they have to consume alcohol before going inside the sewers and uh, and in fact uh, uh, in fact for many i mean in fact many women in hyderabad so they say that it is impossible to walk without chewing tobacco so it allows them to uh, allows them to do the it allows them to do the work without any touch but so they are also increasingly prone to uh, mouth uh, cancer and uh, what we also argued in one of the papers somewhere that the mouth cancer is the is the sign of caste it's not simply the addiction and so particularly uh, particularly the women sanitation workers and uh, and a lot of uh, sexual harassment uh, happens uh, by the supervisors uh, and not only by the supervisors but also uh, when they are uh, sweeping the roads early hours like say 3:30 or 4:30 they are supposed to be expected to be there and public i mean so casually hit on them and go and uh, so pass some lewd comments and uh, that's not the case here men but men it was earlier they used to shave it how they are publicly they were publicly shamed wearing uh, by because of the because they used to weak um, used to stench and the stinking sewers but now because of mechanization they could wear some suit where they can actually take it off once their work is done in robin nagel words it's it's it's, it's the invisible and visible that actually we're talking and now it reverse happens here in covid it became visible now they become visible when they are wearing the uniform so the moment they come out of their work they become invisible because they can pass as somebody so Have Himangi. Yes, uh, Dr. Himangi, please uh, uh, unmute uh, yourself and uh, feel free to ask uh, or engage. Thank you for allowing me to speak here, um, and uh, thank you for this uh, organizers for allowing this, uh, like um, uh, putting this topic uh, for this discussion, and. Um, Uh, Kanti's uh, very elaborate uh, kind of uh, discussion. Uh, here, I would like to add uh, two three points. Like uh, I have been now seeing some of the questions, and uh, uh, some of the questions are uh, very pertinent in almost all discussions. It has come. Uh, like uh, yes, uh, there is uh, there is a discussion that uh, this work is. basically as a caste based occupation at least in india and uh, without caste you cannot talk about uh, sanitation work because it is based on your caste profession and there are almost more than four or five generations or even we don't know how many generation these people are carrying this occupation as the how the brahmins are doing uh, or enjoying the resources or uh, maybe uh, the uh, Uh, the land or maybe the education they don't know how many generations these uh, the brahmins are um, taking education the same way uh, the sanitation workers they don't know how many generations these uh, people are uh, doing this occupation and uh, this is very distant kind of dream that we can say that uh, it will be more of a professionalized uh, occupation i don't know when it will happen uh, but now every even now also it is more of a caste based occupation and uh, the 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 people who are coming in this uh, occupation from different caste they are also from bahujan background you will not find any person who is from ka brahmin background and hardly one or maybe there are there were some uh, like a picture showing that brahmins are also coming in but it is just for like fake and this is just for name sake they come and they just do the picture like how the bollywood come and politicians came when the um, 
uh, uh, that uh, that government started uh, uh, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. The same way this they came, but they came, they come for the picturization and then they show. So this is the thing. And uh, when other caste person come in this occupation and the. Uh, uh, this is the voice of uh, sanitation workers that they say that uh, because when when it was the, uh, the the dirt they were carrying on their head that time nobody was coming and doing this occupation or joining this occupation as and when the modernization or the industrialization or mean the new new kind of avenues have come up uh, uh, to some kind of modification in this occupation and then uh, the other caste person are started joining that is also for names sake because they want government job but in the private sector or in the contract sector 100 percent are from the SC's background only the government sector you will find some of the OBCs or some of the person STs but 900 percent from a private background or the contract background are the um uh, this uh, scs so this is the case another is a gender aspect if you ask about the gender aspect the gender has 90 percent 99 percent of women in the rural areas the sweepers or the manual uh, handling the hand uh, they are handling uh, by hand this uh, dirt they are women and uh, and they have a number of uh, like uh, problems they face gynecological problem or maybe the sexual harassment or maybe the respect or maybe the taunt and all these things and we have come up with this news that uh, study uh, mostly in the gender aspect and uh, that we have uh, published here uh, in the sage uh, so that uh, that paper one can uh, see uh, uh, and it was very elaborate study of uh, uh, it, it, including the gender aspect so these are the these are the pertinent point which we have we, when we are talking about uh, this uh, uh, sanitation occupation another is when we talk about uh, the sanitation occupation related to uh, covid 19 but it, like the study which we uh, I have been studying almost more than 15 or 16, 17 years and even the field realities, it's showing that whenever any kind of calamities came, it is, maybe it is natural or maybe it is man-made calamities, these are the people who are the first affected and these are the people who come on the street or they, they came to serve the people. So any kind of, maybe it is COVID, maybe it is a delay, maybe it is a natural or maybe it is a man-made calamity. So these are the people who came to, to you, to the society, to serve you. And that is what these people have been doing from generations. And this is what I want to conclude here. Thank you. Thank you so much for your insights, Dr. Himangi. Dr. Himangi, as she mentioned, has been working on um, caste and sanitation uh, and labor questions for a long time. So we would really encourage you to also, if you're interested in learning more about this, also checking out Dr. Himangi's work. Um, and maybe Kanti, do you want? Do you have some last words, few uh, closing thoughts, um, specifically? With the theme of um, the question around COVID and caste and recasting sanitation work that um, you wanted to emphasize in your talk? Uh, not really, I think I <laughs> have spoken enough. Okay, um, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I think that we've had some excellent questions. I don't know if we have um, time for more. I think this is it, Swati, is that I think we're out of time. Um, yes, I think uh, if Kanti and Palashi, you both are okay, we can conclude here. And uh, to the audience who is here engaged and listening, uh, we we um, request you to interact with Kanti via email uh, with Palashi as well. And Dr. Himangi, uh, I'm so glad that uh, you came up and concluded on very strong notes. So uh, you have three very... Um, uh, 
robust academic work that are there. Kanti and Himangi's work is on sanitation works uh, and uh, all very long, uh, you know, academic trajectory. So you can look up their work, you can follow them on Twitter and uh, Palashi's Twitter handle and her writings are also uh, in the chat box. Um, so with this, we can conclude and thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Kanti and Palashi for this in insightful and engaging presentation. I think we are all leaving with a lot of questions to reflect on. Uh, this has been a very, very, very engaging conversation. Thanks a lot. Thank good you. night. Thank you so much for, for having us. See you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Take care. Bye. Rupali.